If you are also looking for professional certified structural engineering services or courses, then don't forget to check link in description of this video. Hello everyone, in this lecture we will learn how to calculate expansion joint for a structure. Expansion joint shall not be less than 3 by 8 inches or 10 mm in thickness and shall have sufficient thickness to accommodate displacements of the supporting structure. Expansion joint shall entirely be free of mortar and other debris and shall be filled with a resilient material. As per American codes, when building dimension is greater than 200 feet, then an expansion joint is mandatory to provide. Expansion joint is checked using temperature loads and in case of tower structures, it must be checked using seismic drifts. If the thickness of joint is governed by temperature loads, then it is called an expansion joint, while if the thickness is governed by seismic loads, then it is called seismic joint. In the next video, we will discuss how to calculate the expansion joint or the seismic joint thickness. But in this video, we will cover only how to calculate thickness of expansion joint. So the building is subject to, to temperature variation plus minus 25 degrees Celsius. When there is a need of expansion or seismic joint, then the buildings are modeled as a separate model. If there is no common podium structure. This is a visual example of a building having an expansion joint. You can clearly see that this is a minimum separation between the buildings and we'll dis we have already discussed why we need this separation because of expansion of the building due to temperature as well as contraction of the buildings to avoid breakage or brittle failure if it's a concrete or a steel structure. So the thermal expansion and contraction of the material which is occurring at a very regular rate we don't need to consider it but if the building is subjected to extreme temperatures such as plus minus 25 degrees Celsius is a difference of 50 degrees centigrade difference. So we need to apply that and see the resulting building expansion joint requirement. So that is where the expansion joint is going to play a very important role. This is how the buildings are to be modeled for analysis and design as well as expansion joint calculations. The buildings are to be modeled separately. Consider two buildings, technically one building separated by an expansion joint. In our structure both parts of the building are exactly the same. This is building's half part and this is building half part. But technically an architect would call these buildings as one building as if we see this is one building but we being structure engineers have separated this building because of the thermal expansion and contraction of the material whether it be steel or concrete structure so we'll be modeling these both of the buildings differently in ETFs. all you can say half of the building different and half of the building different and as well as design the buildings differently if there is no common podium in the structure and now we need to calculate how much the expansion joint thickness would be basically how much the building should be separated how much should be the distance of separation between the two buildings so first let's proceed to e tabs so this is the building which is the half of the building and the half is also identical exactly the same in our specific case however there can be different because of architectural plan variation but i am considering that this is the building half of the it is separated due to expansion joint so in order to calculate expansion joint i need to apply temperature load to the structure so i'll click on all go to define load patterns you can see already we have applied all the loads this is because we have already designed this whole building in this is a 20 story building and the design of this whole building is covered in ETEPS professional course with 20 story building design which is a 9 hour course you can easily buy it on Udemy and the link of this course will be given in description similarly we have also created a SAP 2000 course you can easily go to udemy.com and get access to both of these courses going back to the video now we have to define temperature loads
since we are to apply temperature plus 25 degrees centigrade as well as minus 25 degrees centigrade so I am defining it as a temperature load You can change the units, it's right now in Fahrenheit, so I'll apply the units. Similarly, select again and click on assign. Now we have assigned the temperature loads to the whole structure. Now save the model and run the analysis. In order to save runtime, let's click on So while it's performing the analysis, let's discuss what we are basically trying to do. Let's say this is my building 1 and this is my building 2. Or you can say half of the building is here, half of the building is here and we are trying to calculate how much spacing we are to provide between the buildings in order to allow for the expansion of the building. So we are requiring this one distance. So in order to calculate that this using the temperature criteria, we are supposed to work out the temperature load expansion and contraction. You know that when heat is applied to the structure, we know that the building expands. So the red color is showing when the building is expanding due to increase in temperature. Similarly, let's donate the by red color that the building is expanding due to increase in temperature this is the ground level this is the base of the structure similarly the other half of the building would be here So when the buildings will expand at the highest design temperature that is plus 25 degrees celsius we need to be sure that the buildings don't try to cross each other's boundary so this is the maximum distance let's say the building one let's try to donate the distance by green color and similarly this one dimension
let's call this distance as displacement d1 and this one displacement as displacement d2 so we are supposed to calculate the expanded distances between the buildings and if the buildings are identical our total expansion joint thickness required would be the total expansion joint thickness should be at least d1 plus d2 plus how much the material material or the expansion joint if you are using it should be compressible so it is basically expansion joint thickness is equals to d1 plus d2 in case of identical buildings which is our case then the expansion joint thickness becomes 2 times of d1 since our building is going to be identical in since both of the buildings are identical or you can say half each half of the building is very same so we'll just calculate the thickness of expansion joint by making this expansion as twice so how much is our structure expanding we need to see the displacement or the deformed structure and click on increase in temperature load and click on ux since my other building is in x direction if i can see the power point here you can see my other building is in x direction so i need to calculate this x distance and therefore x displacement and right now it is in inches so click on apply now go to plan view you can easily see which joint is displacing maximum here you can hide rest of the structure for your convenience let's say if i am supposed to hide rest of the structure for my convenience it's also going to be very simple since we are only interested to calculate the expansion of this part of the structure which is this one so let's hide rest of the structure so we stop getting the extra values And similarly let's go to the plan view now go to deform shape displacement in x direction if you can clearly see the color coding here shows that the blue color shows that the displacement is less than 1.4 inch while the purple color shows the displacement is greater than 9.8 inch which is a lot of displacement that means the structure is displacing in x direction uh, by 9.8 inch exponential minus 12 if you want to change the units you can change the units to millimeters as well So now the units are being updated. So the units are now in millimeter 9.8 to the power minus 12. So the building is expanding very less due to temperature load as it is very clear that the building is less than 200 feet in direction as one of our requirement according to the code is that the minimum expansion joint should be 10 millimeters if the building is greater than 200 feet 
if the building is greater than 200 feet basically this dimension of the building should be greater than 200 feet to apply expansion joint but for demonstration purposes we are applying expansion joint to this building to show how much significance it of significance it can be right now our expansion joint is coming required to be come out to be let's say 2.5 a to exponent minus 10 which is a very negligible value so the d1 value is coming out to be 2.58 exponent minus 10 which is a very negligible value and in our case we can neglect the expansion joint for this special case let's say if this value came out to be a bit higher let's say this value came out to be 1 inches then what we have to do we have to make the distance two times and provide expansion joint in structural drawings the expansion joint is not modeled in the structure as we are already recommending to model the buildings on either side of the expansion joint separately you can name this as half building 1 half building 2 so whenever we are providing expansion joint the buildings are modeled separately as well as designed separately if you want to see the design of the 20 story st structure including the dynamic as well as static analysis for the whole 20 story building which we have seen today in etabs you can click on the link in description for the etabs course published on udemy as well as sap 2000 course covering the advanced topic as well as basic topics